In this tutorial, we're going to create another um, side-scrolling animation, but this time we're going to work with looping backgrounds. Now, this can be a little bit complicated at times, so it's, it's very important that you follow the same steps that I'm going to be doing, just to make sure that we stay together. Now, in order to get started, one of the things that I think is really beneficial is separating our layers now, just so we can keep things organized and just focus on one layer at a time when we need to. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of my layers, right click and choose distribute to layers. Then I can delete the layers layer and you'll see that I have the grass layer, car with kids, road, street light, and unfortunately it did break those into two separate street lights, mountains, clouds. So I'm going to go ahead and lock the streetcar with kids and turn them off because I know I'm not going to need them. In fact, let's just turn off all the things that we don't need for right now. Um, we're going to focus on just the grass for this first step. Now in order to do any um, side scrolling or looping animation, we have to have some sort of cycle with the graphic, which means I need to be able to move this graphic over to the left and have it extend out so whatever I have right here on the left hand side right there is exactly the same thing that I have um, the next time it comes through. So I always need to have at least two um, versions of a cycle here. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this over and then I'm going to zoom up just to make sure that I get this as precise as possible and I can use the arrow keys to nudge this. Now if you're worried that you're not really really precise Go to the display mode and choose the invert or add or something else type of blending mode and it will enable you to see when things are pretty accurate. If they're not accurate, you'll see that um, we get some, some color shift in there. But if you're right on top of it, then you'll see that it, it pretty much turns gray in between. Then we'll take that off. Now what I'm going to do is select both sides of the grass, make this a new movie clip by right clicking and choosing convert to symbol and call this grass long. Now I'm going to actually make this into another movie clip and the reason why is because I'm going to do the animation inside of its own movie clip instead of on the main timeline. So let's right click again, choose convert to symbol and this will be the grass anim. Now I can double click to go inside the timeline of the grass anim and I can create the animation that I need here. Let's create this animation by extending out my timeline oh, to 50 frames for right now. Insert frame and now what I want to do is make a new layer and duplicate what I currently have. The reason why is because just like I used um, that invert to make sure that I was precisely positioning the second copy next to the first copy, I'm going to do that to make sure that the end of the animation is precisely matching the beginning of the animation. In order to do this, let's um, take the end of our animation, we'll create a new keyframe, insert keyframe, and we'll move that grass over until it matches where the original background grass was. So we're making sure that we match that. And let me zoom up. And then I can use the nudge to nudge it over. And then I can also, of course, use the color effect. Whoops. Change this to invert, add, whichever one. Looks like add is not the right one. I forget which one to use. It doesn't really matter because I can tell that I am pretty darn close. I don't see any other um, pieces that are jumping out. So I know that I've done a pretty good job of matching that animation to the next side. Now I can right click and choose guide on the bottom grass and that way it won't be shown when I see the animation it will not be animated and now I can right click and choose create a classic tween and so there's the tween 
of that cycle. Now, if you want to test this out, go ahead and um, do Control Enter to test your scene. And what I want you to notice at some point is that it might look like it has a little tiny bit of a hiccup. And that's because the first frame and the last frame are exactly the same. And what we need to do is we need to tell it to go back and play frame 1 before it has a chance to play frame 50. This is really, really easy. Just open up your Actions panel on frame 50 and do Go To and Play Frame 1. And what this does is this bypasses frame 50 when it enters the frame and jumps back to frame 1. So the loop is now really just happening between frame 1 and frame 49. Go ahead and test your movie now, and you should see that that animation looks like it is just cycling perfectly. In order to slow down that animation, all you have to do is add some frames to it. So you can click anywhere between the two frames, and whether or not they're um, animated or not doesn't matter. Just press F5, and you'll add as many frames as you want. If you want to add a lot at once, select a whole range of keyframes, and when you press F5, it will insert as many keyframes as um, you just had selected. Now what you're going to be doing is you're going to be repeating this exact same process for the next few layers, and you'll be um, changing the speed of the animation to make it so that the different layers animate at different speeds, giving you that same parallax look. So the faster um, layers will be animated in front, the slower ones will be animated in the back. Um, this, even at, at however many frames it is now, which is about 89 frames or so, still is pretty fast because it's a pretty long graphic. But you'll have to adjust those things um, in the back as needed. So go ahead and um, maybe hide that layer, go to the next layer, such as the road, and repeat that same process until you have all the different layers um, animated and everything looping perfectly. And if you have any questions, let me know. In the end result, you should have the car coming through with kids, just like we did with the other ones. You might want to go ahead and animate them separately so they can be animated on the main timeline. All you have to do is create some sort of loop in here, or you can have them in their own timeline, which is um, actually quite smart. I think I already had that set up that way. It's not a bad idea for you to have your own timeline with the kids. So I'd probably make this into a movie clip for your kids. Kids Anim. And have them driving through. So they'll drive through and then go out the other side and then maybe there'll be some space and then they'll drive through again and it just will cycle that animation continuously. So if you have any questions let me know um, otherwise uh, go ahead and work on it and save your work when you're done by removing and make sure that you do remove the start so that we know it's your file. Thanks.